Hello viewers, here is a Lasco Cyclones fan. Somebody was throwing this out, so I figured I'd grab it and see if it works. It does not, um, which is a little bit surprising because it looks fairly clean and low hours, but further investigation has revealed there is more to the story. A lot of people think these quit just on their own. Um, they fail of natural causes. I would argue that's not that true and most of the time these fail it's because of some kind of neglect or misuse or lack of service or a combination of all the aforementioned. In this case I believe it has failed due to lack of cleaning. Now somebody at some point did output a valiant effort to clean this up and they did a halfway decent job. However, what they missed, and I think what most typical consumers of these fans will miss, is cleaning out the motor. As you can see here, this motor is doing absolutely no cooling. It is completely blocked up with dust fully blocked and you can look and see on the side here all that dust blocking all the vents on the motor so I suspect the motor lost all the airflow through it and overheated at some point and since these do not come with resetting thermal protection once that happens, that's the end of it until you replace the switch. Now there is something wrong with the top of it. I believe this is just an IR receiver. I think these would have had a remote. The buttons themselves appear to operate, although it's very possible the electronic control panel just failed. Because those I don't really get them a lot of credit for reliability. Um, there's also the possibility that the fuse in the plug has gone bad. I've not done any troubleshooting yet beyond plugging it in and pressing the button and it not working. So I'm going to plug it in again and watch it somehow work this time. Turn the power bar on. Okay, it's plugged in. And we get nothing. So to check the fuse the easy way, I've got a um, voltage detector here. And we're just going to put this up against the cord. And on the high side of the cord, we have voltage. Now, I don't know if these fuses are on both sides. I think it's only on the high side. That's normally what it is. But if you have a grounding cheater that's not polarized, you can use that to check both sides. I'm not going to check both sides in this case because I think I know what the problem is. But if it was a more mysterious problem, you could check both sides of the cord uh, to make sure that it is working. I suspect it's a thermal issue, so I'm going to go right into that. So, to get this open, I think it comes apart um, just with these plastic tabs here. I don't know if it's best to insert the screwdriver on this side I don't see oh actually there is two there are two squares there is a screw over here And there's a screw over here. Okay. 
So let's see here. Now I think the tabs should come off a little bit easier. Those are the tabs that I'm talking about here. Are they showing up in the video? Yeah, right there. And I think if we just kind of go like this and push that down and pull it out at the same time, it should release. It's likely more than two. Yeah, there's another set on the bottom here. I think this is going to end up being one of those jobs that requires four hands. Sometimes you can substitute a set of tools for a fourth and third hand. I think this will be one of those cases. Okay. Here's what the inside of the car looks like. Again, it's pretty clean. They did a, a, a decent job actually cleaning this up. It's a shame they didn't get more use out of it once they did all that. Because they went further than most people do. Alright, let's get this plate off. See, this is what happened. They probably stopped here. They didn't go any further than this. Oh, look at this. We'll clean this up when they put it back on. They need to go further. Stuck on there pretty good. Huh. This is at a very awkward angle to get it off, too. Oh man, that's really stuck on there. Um, okay. What are we gonna do about that? Alright, I'm going to finagle at this off video and see if I can get it off of there. So now the blade is off. And you can see even the front of the motor is starting to block up. It's really... Uh, Kind of impressive. I've never, never seen one quite this bad. I think. So let's get deeper into this motor and see if we can find that thermal fuse and check it. Still spins freely. Okay. All right, there's that. the worst part of this thing. go. That is probably the failure mode. <laughs> A 
Well, that is insane. That is really insane. You know, I have to say, this is really what causes these to fail. There's not a whole lot of other failure modes from these fans. And this kind of accumulation will take out one of the older motors too, the Marco motors, the McMillan motors. Those, of course, are a lot more durable. They also have resetting fuses, so the failure is going to be a lot less uh, prominent. It takes a lot longer. But this really ran a lot of hours before it got like this. And so to say that this fan is bad, I don't necessarily think is uh, accurate. It's not as well made as you know, a vintage fan is, but something that ran for this many hours to get this much dust in there is not intrinsically bad in my opinion. 